Module 33, The Qing Individualists. I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department, Drawing and Painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. The Qing Individualists were the ones who had put new life into the Chinese tradition. The earliest among them was Shi Qi, then came Pa Ta Sha Zhen, who was the descendant of one branch of the Ming imperial family. Shi Tao was known as the third individualist. Kung Hsin was traditionally classed as one of the eight masters of Nanking. Kung Hsin pupil Wang Kai produced a more ambitious handbook illustrated with woodcuts in color. The Qing individualists, scholar painters who withdrew into private life at the early Qing period on the accession to power of the alliance Manchus might have been expected to take as their models the scholar painters of the Yuan dynasty who had become recluses under similar circumstances. That they did not was chiefly because the style of the Yuan masters had already been appropriated by the orthodox literati, many of whom were loyal, serving the Manchus. If painting was to become a living art once more, the painter had clearly to free himself from the burden of theory and scholarship carried by the literati. He must use his art for the spontaneous expression of his own feelings. This is the Qing individualist triumphantly accomplished putting new life into the Chinese tradition. Moreover, now, in early Qing period, many educated men renounced their lives of worldly affairs either through physical withdrawal from the urban center into Buddhist or Taoist monasteries or through psychological withdrawal into private world of eccentricity, where they were exempted from social and political responsibilities by the traditional Chinese tolerance of erratic behavior. Shi Qi or Kun Tusan, who was active from 1610 to 1693, the earliest of the Qing individualists was Shi Qi, who was a devout Buddhist. He spent the greater part of his life as a monk in Buddhist monasteries in and around Nanking. His own inscription on one of his works, a picture of a monk perched on a tree, peering distrustfully downward, states his feeling strongly. The question is how to find peace in a world of suffering. You ask how I came hither. I cannot tell the reason. I am living high up on the tree and looking down. Here I can rest free from all trouble like a bird in its nest. People call me dangerous man, but I answer, you are like devils. Some of Kuntusan's landscapes represent the particular scenery of places where he lived. The subject of Kun Tusan's most famous composition is the Pao and Temple, dated to 1664, detailed from a hanging scroll, ink and colors on paper, and in the collection of the late Kachi Sumitomo, Ohio, Japan, which overlooked the Yangte River near Nanking. The painting reveals the fondness he felt towards these old buildings and 
their settings most remarkable of all is the colorist treatment of hill in which kuntasan abandoned all his considerations of strong or distinctive brushwork to capture in wet sketchy strokes a quick impression of fading light she is hanging scroll in new york collection dated to 1666 is wooded mountain at dusk here is found a hint of the close knit compositions of wang meng though his scrubby brushwork makes no obvious appeal to the viewer kuntasan style exemplifies the quality that the chinese critique term luxuriance or denseness the characteristics of his landscape is the texture quality which he depicts with a dry scrubby brush which has the grouping almost fumbling quality that we find in seza his autumn landscape dated 1666 is a hand scroll ink and light color on paper and at present in the collection of british museum london gives an impression of grandeur and serenity part ta shan jen active from 1625 to 1705 a very different type of expressionist was chu ta he gave himself many names but is known chiefly by an odd taoist appellation pa ta shan jen which he used after 1689 born in 1625 he was a descendant of one branch of the ming imperial family upon the fall of the dynasty when he was about 20 he became a buddhist monk it is said that on the death of his congenitally dumb father he became dumb himself nevertheless he loved company and drink and had many friends most of his paintings were done while he was drunk people who wanted works by him piled him with wine until he was completely drunk fish bird rock by parta shajen dated to 1694 it is ink on paper a hanging scroll and at present in the collection of ritberg museum zurich this picture shows the high degree of abstraction which chuta was able to attain the three pictorial building bricks step directly out of the surface with a few simple strokes and the application of brush dripping with ink the artist created a picture simultaneously in the spirit of the chan painting and the literati the hovering fish shows characteristics of traditional painting water is not represented chuta is better known under his artist name of bada shanren and the monk hon gren in his painting pata shajen transferred the falling brush strokes calligraphy to the painting of landscape he painted them with just a few simple strokes or it sometimes seems a single brush stroke his style at once abstract and powerfully expressive majority of his works are characterized by generally brushed lines dots or strokes running in all directions alongside and across each other and also by lack of scale and perspective according to the art historian Craig Clunas Pata's 
painting do not resemble anything produced by his predecessors he found many imitators however particularly in the modern period his works can often be interpreted as the silent protest against foreign rule this can be seen for example in the recurring image of a lotus flower with a broken stem perhaps his peculiar genius is most evident in his swift album sketches and moreover patasha jen works a swiftly sketched studies of flowers angry little birds bird on a rock dated to 1694 is in paris collection dr jex lacan two birds in the collection of late kenchi sumitomo ohio japan bird an album leaf dated to 17th century ink on paper and at present in the museum of far eastern art are good examples his another painting is fish darting among fish like rocks is poised in empty space and drawn with fewest possible strokes in dark rich ink his small lively creatures capture the very essence of living nature painting was for pata shajen a means of communication and his use of it expressive but seldom truly fluent his brush moves slowly often with an odd twisting motion which is to be observed specially when the stroke changes the direction where the stroke was made with a brush unevenly loaded with ink marked variations in tone appear within it spots of ink are sometimes applied so wet that edges blur as the ink suffuses outward at other points the stroke is dry and scratch through all this variety of brushwork runs a constant and very distinctive quality which prevent pata shajen's work from being confused with those of any other painters occasionally he painted landscapes beneath whose creative abstract forms lies a deep feeling for the monumental compositions of the northern shung dynasty in a landscape leaf from an album painted on silk in the honolulu academy of art is among the few works done in color a particular stroke and bent are repeated throughout the picture whereas in the hanging scroll in the shokokuji a buddhist temple in kyoto it is ink on paper is a landscape of a different sort more sparse and less tightly knit in design with even more of an air of improvisation yet the landscape has the organic unity of a natural growth and a monumentality that evokes echoes of the northern strung artist when pata revered shita was active from 1641 to 1770 the third great individualist the painter with greatest breadth of vision and the finest technician as well was tao chi also known as shi tao the name he adopted as a monk he did not settle for long in any single place and spent much of his life wandering about china visiting sacred mountains 
in the company of monks and scholars spending 3 years in peking where he and wang yuan chi collaborated on a picture of bamboo and rocks until his late years which were mostly spent in and around the city of yangchou where he often painted in the company with pa ta sha jen till later death in 1705 he followed the precepts of kyu hisi absorbing sensory impressions from nature but also trying to understand the hidden forces of heaven and earth when asked whether he painted in the manner of the southern or northern school he replied saying i do not know whether i am of a school or the school of me i paint in my own style it is said that all the qing painters shi tao was the most philosophical in outlook and the most articulate a collection of his scattered notes published after his death sets out his belief that the essence of painting lies in the ai hua single brush stroke method by one spontaneous movement of the hand he wrote mountains rivers human beings birds animals plants will assume form in accordance with their characteristics they will be drawn as if alive and the meaning will be revealed from his rare large hanging scroll to his smallest album leaf he painted one can get a sense of the life and unity of nature shi tao the great non conformist artist was also known as dao ji and yuan ji he became a pupil of the chan monk and he painted his first pictures in 1650s during the 1660s he developed a style of his own based on the works of artists from anhui he was influenced in particular by the dry ink technique of ni tisan and the outline style by mio of li long mian in comparison to the orthodox literary artist however he never had the opportunity of seeing originals of the yuan or shung era probably works from the ming period and their transformation into woodcuts were the examples from which as a self taught artist he learned his trade the extreme poverty in his youth was reflected again in later years in countless pictures of a melancholy nature although shi tao concept of painting ran counter to that of the orthodox painters he collaborated with wang hui and also with wan yuan chi the commercially oriented members of the literati in his highly original calligraphy which in brush technique is closely related to his painting shi tao is at pains to show that nothing benign or original could be expected from the traditionalist some of his pictures are in fact declarations of war on tradition his 10000 ugly pink dots to be formed in su chao was by his own admission an attempt to shock those who praised only the old masters not to belong to any school was his artistic creed abstraction his aim and yi hua line his means this priority of line a stroke of which can denote 
the infinity of creation may have arisen from his knowledge of jain buddhism but daozen might also be possible inspiration in this matter his art is implicit with a sense of the one from which everything originated around 1700 shi tao's text hua yulu conservation about painting appeared the mere methods of painting he writes must not constrict the artist he must not become the slave of technique the transformation of tradition is the only way for the painter to find a genuine style since he cannot feel exactly like the ancients he can only be himself he must listen to his own inner voice alongside the theoretical background to painting in hua yulu shi tao also gives instruction in how to paint various subjects he sets out 13 different textural techniques explains a form a landscape that requires three levels earth trees mountains and recommends the following six topics of composition spring like plain with wintry mountains wintry trees in front of spring like mountains towering mountains and hanging branches or vice versa the enclosed view in the same sense as an enclosed garden shi tao was also known for bold stone compositions in gardens cut out scenery and finally high steep mountains like those which one could imagine on the islands of immortals an example is of a waterfall on the han river by shi tao dated to 1694 ink and color on paper it is a hanging scroll and at present in the national gallery prague according to the inscription the picture is the impression of a journey on the 21st day of the 7th month of the year 1694 shi tao passed by the ping mountains here reduced composition powerful but concentrated strokes and economical accentuated colors show a scholar in front of a waterfall tension is created through the empty space and through the contrast of the high cascading waterfall and the horizontally composed pine tree the pines and the waterfall oppose one another on one diagonal the painter and the poem in the other she tells another hand scroll peach blossom spring dated to about 1643 to about 1707 it is ink and color on paper and at present in the freer gallery of art usa with the theme of the peach blossom spring shi tao varied a standard motif of literary painting the ming literary immortalized the motif specially chu ying tao yuan ming the prose poem peach blossom spring tells the story of a fisherman who passes through a gap in the rocks into another heavenly world after traveling along the river bank with only peach trees growing on it the inhabitants of that world live in peace and prosperity never returning to the world on the other side of the mountains they look after the fisherman well and ask him to keep their existence a secret when the fisherman returns to his own world he makes the way to the gap in the rock exactly but when the perfect 
on the basis of his report sends out a search party there is no trace of a path to that heavenly world in order to give expression to his feelings he not only flouted all the rules but invented a new range of forms and techniques an album leaf plantations after rain now in a private collection of china here he has applied pure color in washes of blue and pink and dotted upon the surface of the paper like the 19th century pointless sheet of cheese album leaf a man in a house beneath a cliff of the new vachai collection represents a man in a hut built beneath an overhanging cliff but the movement of the line in drawing of rocks is too grand too sweeping to be limited to a particular object and the use of multiple contours suggest the artist's refusal to fix such limits a height of grandeur and universality is reached in shi tao chi's masterwork the great waterfall on mount lu it is a hanging scroll ink and light colors on silk and at present in the collection of late kanchi sumitomo ohio japan here he seems to have painted in a state of almost childlike aesthetics derived partly from nature and partly from inspiration within himself here shi tao chi has recaptured the precarious balance between subjective and objective modes of vision which had been the triumph of the northern shung landscape 6 centuries earlier kung hisen dated to 1620 to 1689 is traditionally classed as one of the eight masters of nanking one of his friends described him as of an eccentric nature only with difficulty does he get along with other people as a painter he was also singular and said of himself there has been no one before him and will be no one after me trees in landscape it is a section of a hand scroll ink on paper and at present in the collection of William Rockhill Nelson Gallery of Art Kansas City Missouri over Kung Hussein's landscape there hangs absolute silence no wind stirs the branches no scholar saunters down the path the stillness is partly an expression of Kung Hussein's brooding nature and partly the result of his working almost entirely in graded in tones making scarcely any use of the brush strokes that give life and movement to almost all chinese painting it is said that kung hsin was also an active teacher who prepared for his students a handbook of instruction in the art of landscape painting in 1679 one of kong hsin's pupil wang kai produced a more ambitious handbook illustrated with woodcuts in color thus the painting manual of the mustard seed garden proved to be exactly what the growing army of amateur painters required however the mustard seed garden was by no means the first chinese book with wood block illustrations wood blocks had been in use since the tang dynasty for printing and illustrating buddhist scriptures an example by anonymous painter kuaiyan with willow 
and ways. It is a woodblock print from Tung Huang, belonging to Tang Dynasty, and at present in the collection of BM London. By the Shung Dynasty, line prints were being coloured by hand, and Yuan period saw the first experiments in colour printing. The treatise on the paintings and writings of the Ten Bamboo Studio, prepared by a group of Nanking painters between 1620 and 1630, show what success Chinese craftsmen had achieved their aim of making a colour print resemble a watercolour painting. The painters of Anhui. During the Qing dynasty, the painters who worked in the province of Anhui, at least four of them deserve mention. He Xiu, Yun Tusung, Hang Zhen, Cha Shi Pio, and the eccentric Mi Qing. Among these, the most gifted was Hang Zhen, who was active from 1610 to 1663. Born Chiang Tao, he took the Buddhist name Hang Zhen when he entered the monastery after the fall of the Ming dynasty. He absorbed the spirit of the Yuan master Mi Tisan rather than his technique. Rivers and Mountains Without End, dated to 1666, it is a section of a hand scroll, ink and light colours on paper and at present in the collection of late Kanchi Sumitomo, Ohio, Japan. Zen here delineates and delimits sharply the objects in his landscapes, arranging them in orderly structures with fine lines of almost geometrical precision, yet achieving a breadth and serenity of mood that recall Huang Kung Wang. Thus he was admired and loved for the purity of his heart and mind, qualities revealed in all his paintings. Kun Tusan was a fine landscape painter, but also produced figure studies and plant paintings. His sources of inspiration were primarily the four masters of the Wang era, especially Wang Meng and Huang Gong Wang. Kun Tusan pictures are the expression of an intense experience of nature, not the mere representation of technical possibilities of the brush, the ink or the colours. Through he mastered all these to perfection. Kun Tusan portrays landscapes atmospherically and in detail on the basis of sequence of seasons still preserved complete even if scattered around three museums. Kun Tusan's ability to represent the mood of landscape becomes clear summer, autumn and winter. The later dating from the year 1666 are shown here together for comparison. Spring, the fourth landscape is to be found in the Cleveland Museum of Art, USA. The examples are summer, painted by Kun Tusan, ink color on paper, album leaf and in SMBPK Berlin collection. This picture, like the other in the series, is provided with the inscription by the artist and bears three seals with the names Chi Kui, Shi Chi and Kan Chi, three names regularly used by Kun Tusan. Autumn by Kun Tusan, ink and colour on paper, it is an album leaf and at present in the British Museum, London. Winter by Kun Tusan, ink and colour on paper, it is an album leaf and at present in the British Museum, London.
In all the four landscapes, the painter shows a gentle landscape of hills, old trees, and a simple but in which a scholar is sitting. These four landscapes dedicated to a friend were originally conceived as album leaves but are now mounted onto small hand scrolls. For each season, Kunt San depicts different weather conditions. A clear winter day contrasts with the hazy and sultry summer's day, for example. By wearing both the colouring and also the contrast between clear line and misty washes, all his landscapes are dense and unsettled.